Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, as we know, the criminals are winning right now. You see, apparently, when local governments cry to defund your police department, and then state governments look to disarm otherwise lawful and responsible gun owners, crime seems to rise. And we are experiencing that not only here in the state of Washington, but nationwide. Well, maybe the tide is finally starting to turn. Maybe the good guys starting to win again. Why? Because we're passing new and effective laws, right? Oh, of course not. No, no, no. We would never do that. No, the, the tide is beginning to turn because the lawful and responsible gun owner nationwide is stepping up and saying, you know what? Enough is enough. So today, we're going to spend a few minutes to talk about how to get your arm shot off in Washington State or any other state. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today has been kicking around the YouTube reverse now for over a week. I am the last person to the party on this one, but I thought that we could use this as a nice illustrative example of how self-defense laws, particularly those related to lethal force, can play out in real life. So what are we talking about? Well, Dateline, August 3rd of this year, Riverside County, California, Four young armed men decided it would be a wise idea around 2 o'clock in the morning to go in with an assault rifle and various other firearms and rob the Nor Norco Mart. Now, the problem for these robbers were is that 80-year-old owner and cashier behind the counter, Mr. Craig Cope, now a national legend, well, you see, he was a lawful and responsible gun owner, and he has the right to protect his property, and most importantly, he has the right to protect himself. What happened? Well, let's roll the tape. It's a shooting the bad guys never saw coming. An 80-year-old man defends his business after armed robbers storm into Norco Market and Liquor. Okay, so the short video, a lot of intensity, but a lot to unpack. So where do we start? Well, first of all, we start with a very quick premise that apparently California's assault weapon ban doesn't really seem to work. I know, shocker. I know it's a shocker to all of you. But apparently this young man here did not get Governor Newsom's memo. But I digress. Now, let's get to the more serious subject matter. Is this a lawful use of force? You better believe it is. As a matter of fact, uh, I got to give credit to Mr. Cope. He actually exercised some restraint because I actually believe that the trigger could have been pulled much sooner. Now, according to reports, Mr. Cope saw this car pull up in the wee hours of the morning, and he saw these individuals pile out of the car and recognize that they were armed. Now, if we let's take a step back and let's talk about what happens if this would have occurred under Washington law. We know under RCW 9A.16.020, subsection 3, that we get to use any reasonable, necessary, and proportional force if we or somebody else in our presence is in imminent threat or our property is being threatened. We also know under RCW 9A.16.050, as well as a litany of case law, that we cannot use lethal force unless we or somebody else in our presence are in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury or if a felony is being committed upon our person or if a felony is being committed in our home or our place of business. In this particular instance, when we take a look at any of the four ways that you get to use lethal force, three of the four exist. And the only reason the fourth one didn't exist is that the store was empty other than for Mr. Cope prior to the robbers entering. So let's let's break it down here, okay? Number one, is Mr. Cope in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury? Well, I don't know about you, but when a person walks into a store and then points an assault rifle at you directly, yeah, I think any reasonable person would believe that they're in imminent threat of death or serious bodily injury. Number two, is a felony being committed upon the person of Mr. Cope? Yeah, you better believe it. It's the felony of robbery. It's the felony of armed robbery as it's occurring again right here. Now, number three, 
was somebody else in imminent threat of death or a serious bodily injury. Other than the first aggressors, um, no, because there was nobody else in the store. But then finally, is a felony being committed inside his home or place of business? Yes, it most certainly is. He owns this business and he has a robbery ongoing right now in the store. So Mr. Cope was lawfully justified in pulling the trigger, not only when he did, Mr. Cope would have in all likelihood been lawfully justified pulling the trigger the minute that first young man walked through the door. People don't walk into convenience stores, especially around two o'clock in the morning, loaded with assault rifles just to pick up a couple of Diet Cokes and a pack of smokes. Now this also begins to show the effectiveness of a shotgun as a defensive weapon because Mr. Cope was able to put a shot on target even though he was staring down the barrel of a semi-automatic rifle and effectively put the shot on target. Now, despite what the perpetrator claims, no, he did not blow his arm off, but I'm sure it was a very rude awakening for the would-be robber. So the bottom line is, is if you unfortunately end up in the same position as Mr. Cope, that you are about to become the victim of an armed robbery, do you have the right to use lethal force? You most certainly do. Is doing that the right thing? It depends. Now, on this situation, listen, Mr. Cope, the other guy had a draw, had the draw on him. He drew his firearm first, and it takes some guts here to reach for that shotgun and decide to pull the trigger. But good on you, Mr. Cope. You beat him to the punch, you put a shot on target, you saved yourself, you saved your store, and certainly send a message to anyone else that's interested in robbing the Norco market. Listen, you may have more questions about this issue or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, and if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com, or of course you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember... Part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.